Hello guys, and welcome back to another episode of Airway Sim. Today we're starting off on my main account actually, because I just kind of want to show you guys what is going on with my main account. Now, I don't <coughs> let's play playing on this account because I play on it all the time, so if I do that, I'll miss out on a lot of what I'm doing. And <coughs> if, excuse me for my coughing, but uh, if I do that, you know, I don't want it to just, you know, be jumping ahead again and again. And we don't really know what's going on. So, through that, basically, I just want to take a look at some little statistics. Because, as you know, this game is somewhat of a spreadsheet simulator where a lot of the. There's no real visual result of playing the game, um, just numbers. So, as you guys can see in overall score, the way it's calculated, it takes into a lot of factors. I'm 18th, but I'm really starting to make a climb on some values. I'm 6th in airline value, which of course is the scoring method in Air, uh, Air Tycoon Online. Um, uh, just generally doing pretty well across the board. If we take a look at some financial stats, um, as you guys can see, my profit per quarter and pre profit are all very good. My margin, you know, need to work on that, but considering I didn't start at the beginning of this world and it's only been uh, about eight years and I missed the first year um, I'm doing pretty good considering because I've had to make catch up a lot of ground as you guys can see I'm also pretty good on fleet utilization and very good on fleet size I'm actually gonna be six the next time that updates um, and all this so if you take a look at the scheduling which is really intense when you have this page you guys can see how many routes with each one of these little blue bars being a route I have these are all 737s of course and a few pages of all these aircraft with you know unnamed registries because um, I'm a bit lazy so I never bother to set registries for the planes and yeah, as we can see, we have pages and pages of 777s, occasionally unused plane like that. I'll eventually find a use for those. Um, yeah, as you guys can see, pages and pages upon pages of planes. Um, so doing very well indeed. Now, popping back to our Let's Play world, where you guys can kind of follow the entire journey with me if you so choose. We're doing decently, but not the best. Now, why not the best? Well, I just don't haven't had a lot of time to play on it. I've been at my grandparents' place, but in terms of margin, we are still flying, which is exceptionally good. Because if we take a look at my routes or my aircraft, or uh, maybe it's easiest to do in the scheduling page, I have like five unused aircraft right now. I've basically been uh, buying these up in preparation for the next episode, um, but I haven't had a chance to record it. Um, also, as you guys can see, I own some 720, 727s, um, and I scheduled most of them off camera because, unfortunately, what happened was halfway through the episode where I was scheduling these, the power went out, I kid you not, and I, did, I couldn't salvage the recording, basically, and I didn't want to just leave it half finished, so I just finished it off off camera. Um, anyways, today we're going to be looking to do our first seven-day schedule. Um, I haven't done one yet, so I think it's going to be pretty interesting to see if I can find enough demand to create a seven-day schedule, because that's going to be a really fun new kind of thing to do. So first thing, what we're going to do to create a seven-day schedule is, of course, we need to just find the routes which we plan on making the routes to. So setting some range filters, uh, something like this, we got we can get a list of the airports quite far that are still within the US which might have some demand so Honolulu not looking good Kahului not looking good Anchorage uh, you know we could eventually start adding to routes like that but for now while we're small we want to be looking for more routes like Kona where um, we could easily add another route now I feel like this person has added another route since the last time I looked which is Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'm getting it confused for another place. Lihu is also looking good. Hilo, I believe, used to have a lot of demand, but nope, it doesn't anymore. Very interesting. And Fairbanks. <laughs> no, it's a considerable amount of demand, but I don't think it's worth it yet. But at the same time, this is a stopover, so who knows? I probably could. Um... Anyways, this is pretty sad because I distinctly remember that a lot of these routes had very little competition and even excess demand like Lee Yu does. 
just a while ago, but I think we're just gonna have Lee Hu as one of our seven days. Um, we should be able to fill up pretty good. Uh, what else do we have? Is Kona and all of these other ones looking pretty bad? Okay, Kona is also looking like we could add another schedule. Anchorage and the other ones were all pretty poor. So, that seems to be about it for North America. Now let's do this same search, except in Europe, and we might want to tighten down this down to a more realistic range for our 757. Um, yeah, we're already going to be empty on cargo at this range. And what I'm going to do to get a good idea of demand is this. So I'm holding down control and clicking on this world icon, which is usually a link to the demand chart. And as you guys can see in the upper uh, corner, I'm opening up tons and tons of tabs. So we can kind of um, see how much demand there is. So Heathrow, good demand, but of course a lot of supply as well. <laughs> Paris, same thing. Frankfurt, same. And yeah, looks like a lot of these routes aren't looking great. But Barcelona you know this is enough demand to be profitable for sure um, gonna want to skip over these bad looking ones yeah there's a lot and a lot of oversupply <laughs> uh, that's for sure um, Stockholm no Brussels no Dusseldorf I th I'll think I'll probably include that in my seven day schedule same with Berlin Berlin's really far though so uh, Ooh, did I open Berlin twice? Nope. Okay, so we have five routes, so we need two more. Um, so Berlin was the last one I opened. And the reason why I need two more is the way seven-day schedules work is you basically fly the route once for each day of the week and then multiply that schedule for seven different aircraft. Um, so you will need, depending on the range of the route, between like three and like eight or nine schedules, you can even seven days schedule domestic planes, although in my opinion, the amount of work is not worth the reward. So I believe I have very close to, <laughs> Cologne, I wonder how that route's doing. <laughs> One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Okay, we need one more still. One more route. So maybe I'll just open these manually so I don't have a big tab spam. So yeah, Edinburgh is the first one anyway. So boom, there we go. Here are our seven routes. So let's just start with Edinburgh. And basically we just pick a time. Now, I know the average range of my routes is just about exactly 24 hours, which is quite perfect actually, because that means for a seven day schedule, I can do something like this, um, now Edinburgh is one of the shorter routes so I want to take off slightly later um, yeah perfect and then no actually we probably want to take off slightly earlier I just need to make sure that all the times are good you see none of the times are at a uh, extreme hour of the day so we can go ahead and open this route up so what you do for a seven day schedule is as you guys can so I kinda need to clear this list um, I know for a fact that most of these routes are just me uh, making routes and then kind of realizing that's not the exact time or something I need. So you can go to your notification view here and as you guys can see, no aircraft assigned, no slots assigned, um, uh, whatever you kind of like. I wonder how there's so many routes where there's no aircraft but I still have the slot because that's a bit odd. Um, anyways, we, we're going to do is just going to close these checked routes. And boom. Uh, now when we come here, we have a nice clear board to work with. Um, anyway, so Edinburgh 1535 is our next takeoff time. And Stuttgart. Whoops. Uh, so Stuttgart was somewhere back on this page, first page. Let's go ahead and open that. I wonder what, um, but how many passengers are still going to be, eh, uh, we just rolled a 120, <laughs> that's not looking too great, but, uh, I think I'll just go ahead and make it anyway, I know demand grows over time, so I'm not going to be too concerned about 
this demand being permanently that low, so 1535, of course, uh, 1535, and boom. As you guys can see, the landing time is very similar to our takeoff time. And if we come to our scheduling page, it fits right in. Now, you might ask, if we do this for the whole week, then won't we end up with you know only one day schedule day of week you know supply for you know seven different routes across one week well we just what we do is we take this day we increment the entire schedule by one day exactly and move it onto the next plane and repeat that seven times and then you'll have every day at the same week at the same time uh, so a very nice strategy instead uh, indeed so I'm a bit worried for Lee Hugh and the other American destination because it is in the opposite direction around the world so I'm really hoping the time fits in nicely so we can pray here a little bit and the time doesn't quite fit in nicely so I need to find a route that's short shorter than 25 hours or, or as short as possible basically but unfortunately it doesn't look like we're gonna get it so what I'm gonna try and do then is fit in before so I want to arrive about two hours before 1535 so or 1740 so I want to arrive back at 1540 uh, that's gonna get worse <laughs> uh, oh there is one way to fix it though hmm. I'm just thinking that this probably isn't gonna work because if I move this back to 1540 or so it arrives at 1540 then first of all it's gonna be at a taking off at a terrible time of the day so that's not gonna work so if I were to include Lee Hu it would have to be in the first schedule of the day but that still wouldn't be ideal for the reason that if I were to do that then it, there's no way to fit the European routes so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just regular schedule the uh, American routes and continue with the European routes because I know they'll be in the exactly correct time slot which makes it convenient to schedule um, so yeah that's the new plan I guess so Barcelona El Prat um, Wednesday at 15.35 there we go and yeah as you guys can see how much easier it is to only do the European route Oops, 1620 was the actual time I wanted <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah I'd never want to do the minimum turnaround times um, there's no benefit to doing so I really wish there were things you could do like uh, limit uh, check-in baggage and stuff like that to uh, reduce the turn minimum turnaround time and all that kind of sort of junk to try and make it so you can model more different kinds of airlines it would be so cool if this was one of the first airlines or running a budget airline was worth it but unfortunately our our modeling of airlines is not that advanced in this game even though it is still um, basically the best around that I have seen um, mostly though it's just about finding point-to-point -point traffic and the cargo model however is quite cool um, considering that model transfers have not been modeled yet um, anyways it would be really cool if they were <laughs> uh, 1640 for our next route to Berlin to Berlin Berlin <laughs> I'm getting a lot of direct routes to Berlin eh? or to Germany mm. It's kind of interesting because I know this isn't real life, but uh, I kind of feel like I'm the innovator here. Being, uh, I think it was United who was the first one to decide to fly 757s transatlantic um, from Newark to a lot of European destinations. I distinctly remember Edinburgh is one of them. I'm not sure if in real life, for example, Delta has flights um, to similar small cities in Europe right now but whatever it is you know I'm just gonna carry on and keep making my routes now I think I ran out of routes 
So, how's like Glasgow? Uh, there's enough demand, so of course somebody bigger took it. Pharaoh, 110. 110 is a bit low. Okay, you know what? I'm going to open up a whole bunch of new tabs to make this process a bit faster. Uh, I'll leave the ones which don't look too bad open, so... Marseille looks pretty good. As long as it doesn't look too bad, I'm going to leave it open. Ooh. <laughs> Why is there not another route there already? Sign me up. Uh, Bristol. I could easily put an uh, even larger fleet type on this route. I don't have another larger fleet type, so 757 it will be, but... <laughs> Maybe I should uh, adopt 767. Uh, the other option I have is wait for the A330. Um, I honestly could. Um, I'm quite patient on this world. 1735. Yeah, unlike on my main world, where um, you guys probably don't know, but I have the issue where I really want to expand into more and more markets faster and faster and faster because so many are still empty because the game world is so new but I don't have that issue at all in this world and I feel like the main reason is because there's simply no rush um, most of the demand that hasn't been found um, just the current airlines operating don't have the capacity to efficiently take that demand which means I can take all the time that I need to, to take the routes which I want um, whereas basically just the kind of the leftovers of the big guys who didn't really find that those certain routes which I'm finding now for example are fit because maybe um, they just don't have the 757 as a fleet type or they're super you know busy or bothered trying to figure out their fleet transitions or something like that um, yeah this leaves me open to scoop up the demand in the background like I am doing now uh, now I really want to Shannon looks pretty good 120 it's really close I need to find a close one but Pharaoh looks like the best close one and if even if I refresh I know if I refresh this a few times then uh, it's gonna be pretty bad again but I know for a fact that Pharaoh is not gonna be too bad in the future but let me just check some more British destinations um, because you know with the cultural connection of both being English speaking countries Maybe I'll get lucky. Belfast, come on. Cardiff. 73. <laughs> I can't wait for the 737-700ER. I know it's like more than 20 years away in this world, but it has 4,500 range. And I know it's not supposed to be used for like transatlantic and stuff, but you totally can. Um, and there's no penalty until somebody starts competing with you with a wide body. People will be forced to fly your narrow body transatlantic anyway. Um, which is pretty entertaining to me. Anyways, it looks like Pharaoh it shall be. Um, so I think Pharaoh is on page two. And boom, boom, boom. Pharaoh. Uh, Sunday, I can't remember at what time. 1555 and here we go that's one of a seven day route skip huh. uh oh let's um, just go to six oh no that's 16 I meant to say uh zero zero and is Pharaoh open now perfect and then here we go now, as you guys can see, I deliberately chose a short route because I needed enough time for this. Now, I'm not sure I made quite made enough time. Let's see, 14. That takes off at 1740. So, I am quite a few hours short. So, you know what that means? That means our real winner is Shannon for being close enough. <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> Shannon, Shannon, where are you? 
there you go. Shannon is, you know, about 300 nautical miles closer. Should be able to open up enough time for me to fit in. Uh, what was the time takeoff? I seriously need to get better memory. 1555. It would make playing this game much easier. 1555. And there we go. This now should easily leave enough time for the five hour maintenance. There we go. Go. We can probably just go ahead and start it at uh, 13, not even worry about the minutes, and let's see if that fits. Nope, it doesn't quite. Okay, we have to worry about minutes, so 12.15. <laughs> Monday at 12.15. Don't forget about your maintenance. And perfect. That is one day of a seven-day scheduling complete. Now, what do you do when you have one day of a seven-day scheduling complete? Now. What you usually do is I go ahead and create new routes and then multiply it for the rest of the days of the week, but I don't have that many 757s and I still want to add to those American routes. So I think one of them was Lee Hugh, if I remember correctly. You know what? I'll hold back on adding Lee Hugh, and I'll add one Kona for sure, though. Yeah, Kona has a little bit more open demand. So what I'm going to do to add it is I'm just going to... Hmm. Yes, yeah, create another route like this. And just simply increment the hour by one. Yeah, why not? <laughs> mm. Yeah, but you want to schedule your routes at least one hour apart uh, because that way you don't get a penalty, which you get usually for not scheduling your routes one hour apart. So, what was this time? 11:55. Okay, this is why getting attacked by tabs is a bad thing. <laughs> Uh, close all these tabs. Close, close. 11.55. And honestly, any of you guys with bad memory, I um, apologize dearly for you having to watch me struggle through trying to figure out what days <laughs> my schedules are on. Or what time. Uh, 11.30, 11.30, 11.30. Maybe if I say it enough times, I'll remember, right? I think it worked. 11.30. So the increment's obviously 25 minutes before, so remembering that number of 25, I shouldn't have problems. <coughs> so 25 minutes before of course and there we go now the only thing I am a little bit worried about with doing the scheduling as so is there's of course going to be one day of the week where the schedule must be sacrificed and that's a little bit unfortunate but uh, not much I can do about that uh, so 25 minutes before would be 40 and all our time is still good because we're only moving back by 25 minutes of course so there's just going to be one day of this week where I have to skimp out and not have that schedule mm. if, uh, I'm a bit confused if I were to not fly this day so I'll have most of the day left over on the day I choose to cancel the route make room for the maintenance. What should I do with the rest of the day? See, if I make this next route, there won't be enough time for maintenance. So I need another route to fill in the time gap. What route should that be? Um, now, Pafa? Hmm. I used Pafa last time. but I'm not sure if there's enough demand left over. It'll be harming myself considerably, but I feel like any demand should go to me because NZ Airlines is still using a stopover where my flight will be direct. <laughs> and Sunday, of course, happens to be the day with the most supply, but even so, I feel like feel like I'll do this anyway and find out a way to manage to schedule the rest of the days to PAFA. 
um, eventually. But for now, 950 it shall be. Tapafa, 950 on a Sunday. And boom. You can go ahead and slide that in. Oh, I clicked the wrong one. I clicked Pharaoh. Oh, crap. Well, of course, what I did is accidentally edit a schedule instead of create a new one. So I need 1425 on a Saturday, it looks like. Where'd that tab go? Yep, so we need 1425 on a Saturday. <laughs> uh, I'm so silly. Watch me have done it again and misclicked again, and I see that other schedule. Oh god, I'm almost sure I did it. Yep. <laughs> Create another route like this. Why is that so hard to click? 9.50 on a Sunday. Oh. Yep. Uh, the reason why I clicked, misclicked it in the first place is 7.50. So it must have been 17.50. Um, the reason why I keep uh, doing that. Oh god, it. I need to know how in my brain 950 becomes 750. Amazingly, however, that almost worked by being wrong backwards. Hold up, <laughs> does this work? Um, default turnaround time is 12:45. This actually takes off at 12:20. Okay, so that's pushing it a bit too much. So. What should it actually be? 950. Only in my brain can 950 change to. Oh god. I'm not, I'm not even confident in myself. Okay, 950. <laughs> I don't know how I did that. But, anyways, guys, this may be my brain is getting too fried. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of me being brain fried and scheduling. But hopefully, next episode, I won't be so brain fried and you guys won't have to suffer you were watching my brain frying scheduling but anyways hopefully you guys enjoyed and i'll see you guys next time